you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here, and today I'm going to be talking about 10 Things I Hate About Pinky by Sandhya Menon. 10 Things I Hate About Pinky is Sandhya Menon's newest novel. It is her fifth novel overall, and it is the third and final installment in the Dimpleverse. I'm just gonna warn you all right now that this video is essentially just gonna be a clusterfuck of emotions, so good luck to you, good luck to me, and my only goal for this video is to make it through without crying. So let's get to it! As I just mentioned, 10 Things I Hate About Pinky is the third and final installment in the Dimpleverse. In this novel, we follow the journey of Pinky Kumar and Samir Ja, both of whom we meet in There's Something About Sweetie. This novel takes place over the summer, where, following their annual tradition, Pinky's family is vacationing in Cape Cod. While there, Pinky is, as usual, having every single one of her actions scrutinized by her overly critical mother. In an attempt to prove her mother wrong, Pinky decides to date one of the only good boys she knows that her mother would totally approve of. So, Pinky contacts Samir. Now, Samir is not thrilled by the idea of having to spend the entire summer with Pinky, but having just lost his dream internship that offered him his first taste of freedom and having absolutely no desire to return home this early, Samir decides to take her up on her offer. And from there, a lot of arguing and really frustrating tension occurs between the two. So now I'm going to give you all a little history lesson that is just about me. So let's all journey back to 2017. Now I know I say this practically every other video, but I'm going to say it again. If you have been following me for any amount of time, you must know by now that When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon is one of my absolute favorite books of all time, and it is also one of the most important books in the entire world to me. I don't have an exact memory of my reaction to when the book itself was announced, but I have a number of distinct memories for what happened in the months following. I remember when I saw the cover of this book and I got to see someone who looks like me and who was happy. I got to see a smiling Indian American girl on the cover of a novel. That is not something I had ever experienced before. It just felt like a dream come true, honestly. And then I very distinctly remember when I found out that I was going to be getting an arc of the book. You know when people talk about that feeling of like floating on a cloud or whatever? That is how I felt in that moment. I can't think of the right words to express how much that meant to me, getting to read that book about two kids who looked like me and who had experiences rooted in my background. And I remember when I got to meet Sandhya for the first time. That is just such a special memory that forever exists in my heart. I look back on that picture of the first time we met and I just think about how young I was and just how grateful I felt. Having that kind of feeling of being seen and being validated is something I had never really experienced before. It's one of the biggest reasons that I started campaigning so hard for representation in media because I finally got to see how big of an impact it makes. And when I found out that When Dimple Met Rishi was getting a sequel, I was just ecstatic. I love When Dimple Met Rishi so much and it was something I totally wasn't expecting, so that just felt like another gift from the heavens that I don't believe in. And when I found out that the story was going to be centered around a fat Indian American teen and one who was happy with herself and her weight, I was just so excited. I feel like I keep saying that I was so excited about all of these things, but that's because that's how I truly felt. I mean, again, I remember the day I saw the cover of There's Something About Sweetie. It was a fat Indian American girl laughing on the cover. She was so happy. That's not something that happens. It 
simply isn't. It's just another thing that I felt so very grateful for. And then when I found out that there was going to be yet another companion novel, I was... My mind was blown because it just felt like dream after dream after dream coming true. I actually found out about Pinky's novel a few months before it actually happened because the second time I was interviewing Sandhya, I basically insinuated my theory that there was going to be a spin-off or companion novel about Samir and she was like, don't put this in the video, but there is gonna be one. It just felt like I was living in a different realm because I thought that I was just making a joke and having some wishful thinking, but maybe I single-handedly manifested it. That's also potentially a possibility. You know, one of the reasons that When Diplomat Rishi means so much to me is because of how much of myself I see in Dimple. I just relate to her character so very much and I felt that way with Pinky too. I feel like I can see so much of my younger self in her, like me a couple years ago when I was just starting high school. I feel like I see so much of that version of Kav in Pinky. To read a story about someone who not only looks like me, but who actually is like me or who is like a version of me at some point in my life. Because representation isn't only having a character who looks like you or who has the same sexuality as you or the same disability as you. It's also whether that person actually connects to you on a personal level. I truly felt that, especially with Dimple and Pinky's characters, which just kind of elevates their level of importance to me. And now I am going to make a very bold claim. 10 things I hate about Pinky may be my favorite Sandhya Menon novel to date. When Dimple Met Rishi will always be what I consider my all-time favorite because of the depth of my emotional connection to the novel, but when I really break it down, I genuinely think that 10 Things I Hate About Pinky is my favorite. You know, there are probably a lot of reasons for that. I'm sure some of them are stylistic and Every single author, it doesn't matter who, improves with every single book they write because they gain more skills. I mean, Enemies to Lovers is my favorite romance trope and it's one of the two in this book along with fake dating. So all of those factors play into it. But a really huge one for me was Pinky's character. I love Pinky to the point that I started getting personally offended when her mom criticized her. I would take it as a personal offense and actually yell at any character in the book who criticized her. That is the degree to which I love Pinky's character. Don't get me wrong, I love Samir's character too, and I actually didn't expect to love him as much as I do, but I didn't expect his journey to go the way it did either, but Pinky's character is on another level for me. She basically has like one level higher than a gold medal, whatever that would be, a platinum medal, that's what Pinky has. I mean, again, there are so many other positives to this novel. Two that stood out to me are the characters. I would do anything for Pinky's dad. He is the most important man in the world to me and the relationships not just romantic but familial friendships and all that jazz while yes the plot and the writing and the setting and all of that is great character driven novels are my jam so characters and relationships tend to be what grab my attention first and i felt that they were exquisitely done in this novel but i think what cements a novel as a favorite, at least in my experience, is when there's a part of it that you just click with. Sometimes you read a novel and there is just something that clicks, whether that's to a certain aspect of the story or the story as a whole, there's something deeper there that connects with you. I mean, even going back to my relationship with Dimple's story, I cannot be certain that if I had read the book a year earlier or a year later, or even a month later, that I would have the connection with it that I do. I read it at the time I needed it. 
and that is a huge factor as to why it still means so much to me today. Some stories just come to you exactly when you need them, or they include an aspect that you have so desperately craved for years, whether that is representation of an underrepresented identity, or it's something completely different. And these stories in the Dimpleverse have done both for me. I annotated my arc of Pinky, and the number of annotations in here is absolutely ridiculous. I think I marked down at least half the book with quotes that I considered my favorite quotes to potentially use in my review. Which is part of the reason it took me over two hours to write the review, but you know, that's besides the point. I cried four times reading this novel. It's not even a sad book. I mean, yes, there are certainly points that aren't happy. Pinky's relationship with her mom does get intense at points, but it's not a sad story. It is a summer rom-com, and here I am sobbing reading it. I remember the first quote I cried during, and since I have everything marked down in the arc, I can find it and read it. There's just such a stigma about mental health and asking for help. And it's really bad in the Indian American community, but there shouldn't be. I don't know why, but I just started crying as I was reading that scene. And in a sense, I do know why. I have never seen those words on a page before. It's not acknowledged. Because of the stigma in the Indian community, the stigma isn't typically acknowledged. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get emotional now too, so I'm gonna move on. It was just such an important part to me. While reading this novel, I was out in my backyard just yelling at the book and having conversations with the characters while my dog was asleep and completely ignoring all of the stressful emotions I was going through. I just, I, I love it so much. I don't know, none of this is coherent and I barely know what I'm saying, but this is such a good book. I just feel like you can't read Sandhya's books and be unhappy because yes there are definitely tougher parts in them as there are in every book they are not 100% fluff they are summer rom-coms at least these ones i mean the dimpleverse novels are all summer rom-coms they're stories of indian american teens being happy and finding themselves and falling in love and i just love it so fucking much I love Sandhya, and I love this universe that she's created. These characters feel so real, and they feel so tangible, and their relationships are so adorable. In my mind, I have this vision of Pinky as, like, Dimple's younger sister, which isn't true because they're almost the same age, but that's how I feel about the two of them. Because I feel like they're two sides of the same coin, or whatever they say. I don't know what that saying means actually, but I'm rolling with it. I just feel like there is such a significant connection between them. I think that's part of the reason why those two books stand out to me in a different way. Because there's something about Sweetie is so meaningful to me, but it has a totally different reason why it's meaningful. A big part of that book is the fat representation in the book. That is another thing that is not addressed in the Indian community. Sandhya said fuck that and she went for it. And she did it again in 10 Things I Hate About Pinky. She said everything that there's stigma about, I am going to put in my books and I am going to single-handedly end the stigma. And we have to acknowledge and love her for that. And I love these three girls so so much. I love the boys too, don't get me wrong again. Ashish is my sweet 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 chaotic son. His cameos in this book, and I don't consider that a spoiler since it happens so early on in the book, were some of my favorite things. I could stop laughing at literally everything he said. But these three girls are just so incredible. I love them all so deeply. Sweetie is like this lovable, perfect human being. She's who everyone should aspire to be because she is just better than all of us. While Pinky is trying to make the world better while causing a whirlwind in her own life. And Dimple is just 
ready for a fight. And oh my god, I just have to note this. I don't think it's a spoiler, but if you want to get really technical, you can mute this part of the video. Pinky's love of Kali was absolutely everything. The feeling of just seeing someone out there loving and admiring a Hindu goddess, it was incredible. And you know what? Pinky made a point when she referred to Kali as the original feminist. Again, that's something I really admired because it wasn't like this novel was steeped in Hindu culture, which it's totally fine if books are, but that wasn't the story. It just included a main character who really loves a badass goddess. And I love that because it was so casual. It was just there. It was not a big deal. There are just these little seamless things that Sandhya weaves into her books that she just does so well. Something I love about When Temple Met Rishi is how she simultaneously criticizes the not-so-hot parts of Indian culture while also highlighting the brilliant parts. There are just all these little tidbits that she just sticks in her books and I love it so much. You know, these girls are kind of a journey. Pinky is who I was, Dimple is who I am, and Sweetie's who we all should want to be, which is especially ironic since Sweetie's the youngest of the three, I believe. And again, I love the guys too. I love so many of the supporting characters. That's why the companion novels are so wonderful because they are stories about characters who started as supporting characters. They made their way onto center stage, and I remember loving Pinky in There's Something About Sweetie, which is why I was even more hyped when I realized that the Samira story was a love story with Pinky. I love the supporting characters as well, but these main characters, these six characters, they're just, they're everything. I wish we had a companion novel of just all six of them hanging out, so there's an idea just throwing it out into the world. Maybe I can manifest that too. No, that's not possible. I literally have no clue what I'm saying at this point. This video has just been slowly devolving into more and more of a chaotic mess. So I should probably end it soon, but I don't want to because doing so almost feels like closing this chapter, which I know technically it isn't because I can always come back to these books whenever I want. I mean, it's not like Sandhya stopping writing books, but this little universe is just something so particularly meaningful and special to me. I think despite the fact that I say that I am so grateful to Sandhya again and again and again, and the fact that I say I am so grateful for these books, it'll just never be enough. When Diplomat Rishi is the reason that I started doing what I do here, campaigning for representation in media, because I didn't realize how important it was until I got a taste of it myself. And she's who gave that to me, and she continues to give that to me with her brilliant stories about these adorable characters and adorable romances, and I love it so much. I don't know, y'all. I am just waiting for the day that I get to see Sandhya again, like, 10 years down the line, and I get to say an even bigger thank you. Because Pinky's a part of myself that I needed to see, and I didn't even know that I needed to see it. I love angry Indian American girls. I mean, I love angry women in general, but angry women of color always get extra criticism. Don't know why. I love Pinky. Seeing her anger validated, I needed that, and I didn't realize how much I needed to read a book about a girl with a lot of justified anger, maybe some irrational anger, but you know what? What 17 year old is in a chaotic mess? Honestly, I think that's what Pinky was. She was simultaneously so brilliant and smart and also a disaster. I feel like that just represents me in freshman and sophomore year of high school. I didn't realize how much I needed her until I had her. Which I guess has almost been my experience with Sandhya all along. Because while I wanted representation and I kept talking about it, I I didn't really know what it meant until I read When Dimple Met Rishi. She just keeps handing me stories on a silver platter that I didn't even realize I so desperately needed. So yeah, I'm gonna end it there because I 
need to stop. This needs to end somewhere. It was a disaster and I love the Dimpleverse and I love Sunday Manen even more, possibly. So that's where it's at. Thank you all so very much for watching this absolute chaotic disaster of a video. I have a lot of emotions. I apologize. I hope you enjoyed this mess. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe because that stuff would mean a lot to me. And go ahead and comment down below whether you've read Sandia's books and your opinions on them or what book you become a incoherent chaotic disaster about. And as usual, all of my social media and my Goodreads will be in the description below if you'd like to follow me anywhere else. The link to my 10 things I hate about Pinky Goodreads review will also be in the description below if you'd like to check it out. If you are fellow Goodreads users, I would really appreciate if you considered following or friending me on the platform since I put a shit ton of effort into my reviews. That's it. That's the end. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are having a lovely day or night wherever you are. Please remember that you are beautiful and you deserve the world and I will see you soon with a brand new video. Goodbye!